Well, wait, Tony. It's, it's Steven right now. Hold on. Looks like Tony's on, but we can't see him. So right now it's loading up to YouTube. And we're action. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us for our JA Career Speaker Panel today. We are graced to have several employees visiting us from Grant Thornton. They're going to share with you guys some information about what they do and their jobs and how they got to where they are. So um, let's let's learn a little bit about Grant Thornton. Awesome. Thank you so much. And good morning to everyone. We are so excited to be a part of this experience today. My name is Stephanie Blakely, and I want to take a moment to share a brief overview of the company that we work for. Grant Thornton is a global organization that started way back in 1924. Currently, there are more than 58,000 people in 135 plus countries producing almost six billion in revenue. We are the sixth largest professional services firm in the world. And in the US, we have more than 9,000 people across 51 offices producing close to 2 billion in revenue. That revenue comes from companies that we help in many different industries such as banking, media and entertainment, retail, and so many more that you can see on this slide. If you'll go to the next slide, there are three different types of services that we offer to our clients. The first is audit. This is where we examine an organization's financial records to determine if they are accurate and meet rules, regulations, and laws. The second is advisory. This is where we help identify areas where companies can grow their business. And we offer innovative solutions to help them stand out from their competition. And the third is tax. This is where we help companies identify tax laws that apply to them and help them follow the laws so that their companies stay out of trouble. One more important fact about Grant Thornton is that we have an amazing culture. We celebrate what makes us all different and unique. And I know a lot of companies and organizations say that, but I can tell you that it's not just talk, it's real. Our culture is the defining strength of our firm. We have, a, we have a very warm and welcoming environment where I can honestly call the people that I work with my, my work family. So we're looking forward to sharing more about who we are and what we do, and we hope that it will inspire you to seek your dreams and aspirations. Keisha, I'll hand it back over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And thank you for giving that overview. That was really insightful for me as well. So um, I'm going to ask everyone to go around and just give a quick introduction. Tell us who you are and what your position is. And tell us a little bit about what you do for Grant Thornton. Students, I'm going to tell you that one of the things that I learned in prep for this is that we also call Grant Thornton GT. So if you hear the, the letters GT, that means Grant Thornton as well. So Jessica, I'm going to start with you. Give us a, a brief um, introduction of yourself. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jessica Olive. I am the Associate Director of Diversity Recruiting. I've been with the firm for about two and a half years now. And in my really awesome and amazing role, I get to work on the firm's diversity goals and get to meet people like you, these best and bright minds of tomorrow to tell you about GT and why you should join GT. And hopefully you become a part of the GT family as Stephanie mentioned. Wonderful. Thanks, Jessica. We're happy to have you. Um, I'm going to follow my screen. So that takes me down to Joseph. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joseph Loretto. I'm an audit partner, which means I'm part of owner of the firm, Grant Thornton. I've been with Grant Thornton for almost 22 years now. That's hard to believe. Um, and I'm really responsible for reviewing and certifying financial information for different types of companies, so that really means that I'm reviewing the, the information to make sure it's accurate and it's correct. And I'm also an international business leader at Grant Thornton, uh, meaning that I help and advise our clients that are doing business across borders and also lead our diversity group uh, for our Hispanic Latinx 
uh, employees here at Grant Thornton. Wonderful. Thanks for being with us today, Joseph. Thank let's you. Cross, let's cross over to Tony. Tony, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at GT. Sure, great. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for having me here today. Uh, super happy to be here to uh, present to you all. Uh, my name is Tony Banks. I'm the Director of Business Development and Client Services uh, here at GT. Uh, my role is pretty unique. Uh, it's part sales, part client service. Um, but I really serve as the key relationship contact uh, for a lot of our key accounts. Um, I've been at Grant Thornton for about four or five years. I uh, really enjoy the culture here and really enjoy my role in business development. So thanks so much for having me. All right. Thanks, Tony. I'm going to go up to Cassie. Hey there. Hey, students. Thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here. I am a, uh, I wear a couple hats at Grant Thornton. Like Joseph, I'm a partner, which means I'm one of about 500 plus owners of the firm here in the United States. Um, I've been at the firm even longer than Joseph, about 24 years now. Um, I know you're all thinking, how could I possibly be that old? But it's true, I am. Um, and super excited to talk to you guys today. I remember the feeling uh, in high school of trying to figure out where um, I wanted my career to go and what steps I needed to take. So i um, super excited to talk to you guys today and hopefully provide some insight. Wonderful. Thanks for being with us, Cassie. Yep. Maybe the trick is, is when you find a job that you like, you stop aging. Maybe that's it. Is that possible? Is that possible? <laughs> now, Stephanie, you've told us a bit about the company, so tell us about you. Thank you, Keisha, and good morning again to everybody. My name is Stephanie Blakely. I'm a regional marketing leader for the firm, and I've been here two and a half years. What does regional marketing mean? I have responsibility for what we call the central region, and that's 17 different offices from Dallas to Houston to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Chicago, to Detroit. Um, those are just some of the names of the offices that I have responsible for developing unique experiences for our clients. So I get a chance to do lots of events and programs that make it a memorable experience for our clients to do business with. I've done tastings from cheese and chocolate to wine. I'm in a very creative role and totally love what I do. And I'm excited to get a chance to share more about that with you today. Lovely, lovely. Happy to have you, Stephanie. And I'm interested to learn more about the tastings. I'm always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, the person that has helped us to put all of this together today, Pat, tell us about yourself. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Keisha. Um, it's super, super excited to be here. Um, I'm a managing director, Pat Andrews of Sula, managing director in our audit services practice. Um, been with GT for just a little over a year now. Um, I'm based here in Dallas, and I lead our central region IT assurance group. And I know you're probably wondering, what's IT assurance? It's part of audits. Um, we do more of the IT audit. We sort of audit the, the systems. So you'll, you'll hear more, a little bit more about that later on. Um, but I lead that group for the central region. So I oversee our professionals in a Dallas market. So Houston, Austin, Dallas, um, also in Oklahoma City, Tulsa. Um, but I also serve the most exciting part of my job is I also serve as the executive sponsor for our Dallas um, African-American and Allies BRG, um, Business Resource Group, um, and which is part of um, GT's um, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Initiative. So super excited to be here today and to get to chat with you guys. Wonderful. Thank you, Pat. And thank you so much for just having the idea to put this together and, and have some GT folks come and share their stories with our students. We really appreciate it, and I'm sure they will too. Thank you. So, I want to give students a little bit of direction as we get ready to jump into the panel. So you guys have the opportunity to ask questions as um, during the panel. So what you can do is you can use the chat feature that's over to your left, or you can use the Q&A feature. So as questions come up, please feel free to type those in. We have some time at the end of the presentation for our panelists to answer your questions. So 
make sure that you ask questions. They, they're ready for it. They've been preparing for your question. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started with some questions. So we want to get a little bit nosy and learn some other things about you. So our first question for you guys is, what did you want to be or become when you were in high school? So I'm going to start with Cassie because it hasn't been that long since she's been in high school. So. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> so Cassie, tell us, what did you want to become when you were in high school? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I actually, at, at, when I was in high school, was leaning towards being a pediatrician. I've always loved kids and um, liked the idea of, you know, really having a career that impacted lives. Um, I was a first gener. I am a first generation college graduate, so um, it was a big, uh, scary thing to think about medical school and all of that without really having other people in my home that could guide me. Um, and ultimately, in, in high school, found uh, found my way into a accounting class that focused on tax and really loved it and had it in the back of my mind that it was something that I was good at. So ultimately, did not stick with a uh, with pediatrics, but um, love the career that I did find my way into. Lovely, lovely. Wow. Yeah. Pediatrics was, <laughs> that's a, that's a little bit of a, of a jump, right? <laughs> yes. 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 For sure. No. Fantastic. What about you, Joseph? What do you want to be? Well, I thought I was going to be a pharmacist for some reason. <laughs> um, and part of it, I think, was because I did work in a pharmacy during high school. Um, I worked at, at a drugstore called Eckert's, which is no longer around, but it's the same thing as a Walgreens or CVS. So I worked in the pharmacy, saw how the pharmacist had a good good career, did well. And so went off to college and uh, took my first chemistry class, and I did not do so well, so to speak. So um, I dropped that, ended up uh, having an accounting class as an elective did really well on that. In fact, I got an A, so I was really happy. And I was like, you know what, this is something that comes a little bit more naturally for me. And ultimately, I uh, decided to uh, pursue accounting. And that's how I ended up in as an accountant today. Wow, wow. And I can see that, you know, pharmacy does have a bit of, you know, a mathematical bit. I'm just saying that I, I don't really know. But, um, <laughs> but I do remember Eckert. I will tell you that I do remember Eckert. I used to wear a blue shirt, yeah. blue polo shirt, <laughs> and khaki. <laughs> I remember. What about you, Pat? What did you want to be when you were in high school? I'm just going to be honest. I had no clue. <laughs> I was one of those students just having fun in high school and didn't really think of anything else outside those high school walls. But um, I did toy around with quite a few different ideas. I think at one point I wanted to be a flight attendant because um, I like I felt the uniform was smart and I wanted to travel the world. Um, I even dared to imagine of working in the entertainment industry as an actress or a music artist. And then I woke up and realized you needed talent for that. Um, and then I recall just kind of walking in one day and there was this business documentary on and um, they were talking to some, I don't even know who it was, but some business executive. And I remember looking at his office and it was just huge and it had this huge sofa in the background. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to be a business executive, but I need that big fancy sofa in my office. I guess my wish finally came true. Um, you know, I did become a business executive. And now that I, thanks to COVID, I'm working from home. I've got my big fancy sofa behind me. So be careful what you wish for kids. <laughs> I love that. That's called perspective. You see, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Tony, what did you want to be when you were in high school? Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks for asking. Good question. Um, so college was always in, in the cards for me. My parents were both educators. My mom has a master's degree and my dad has a PhD. So, you know, I didn't have much of a choice but to go to college. But um, I really wanted to play professional football or baseball. But really, wanted, really what I wanted to do was uh, to be a fighter pilot, of all things. Um, so I went down to the recruiting uh, office and realized that my eyesight was pretty bad. And I was also pretty big, too. So um, that kind of trust uh, crushed that dream of being a fighter pilot. So um, I also thought about being a pediatric surgeon because um, I just loved everything medical. Um, but, you know, like Joseph, I got crushed in biology and anatomy classes. So I was like, I got to find something different. Um, in my senior year, I took a business class uh, in high school. I really, really enjoyed the subject matter and 
uh, I enjoyed the real world application of the coursework. It's pretty exciting to me. So business to me just clicked. So um, I did end up playing college football for a cu couple of years before I got hurt. Uh, I had a couple of bad injuries there. But, um, you know, my first job out of college, I worked for an investment management firm and really loved it. And I focused primarily on business development and sales and marketing. And I liked that part uh, of my job. And I really enjoyed my experience at that investment firm. And years later, I was fortunate enough to get to Grant Thornton and you know, really having a great time here and enjoy the culture and the people. So that was kind of my background. Wonderful, wonderful. What I really love about your story is just there are so many different pieces, right? Like so many different avenues that you could take until you land on something. So thanks for sharing, Tony. Stephanie, what did high school Stephanie want to be? You know, I wanted to be a business lady like my mom. You know, I didn't quite know exactly what aspect of business, but I, I loved how important my mother was to the organization she worked for. I, I remember getting to visit her office every now and then and getting to see her typewriter. Yes, typewriter. <laughs> At that point, we didn't have PCs and the technology that we have now back then. But the books and the important papers on her desk she made such a profound impact on the people that she touched and the work she did that I knew that was the way I wanted others to feel about my contributions in the workplace one day. So I knew that it was going to be something business related. I just didn't quite know what. So I went on to get my undergraduate degree at the University of Texas and majored in, in economics. And um, I'll talk more about that journey um, as, we, as we talk. So that's what I wanted to do. That's great, Stephanie. Even the idea of a kind of a person motivating you into, into what you wanted to do with your career. I think we see that a lot, especially for students that have a mentor. Um, one of the outcomes from JA is that a lot of times students in, find, find themselves in the careers that their JA volunteers were in. It's, it's, it's a really neat, a really neat metric. Good. Jessica? <laughs> yes. yes, yes. So many moons ago, my mom used to watch this show called Matlock, right? Actually, she still watches the show because the reruns still come on. But let me tell y'all about Matlock. You may not have heard of him, but Matlock was cool. He was this really super cool lawyer. He used to do all this investigating and solve all these crimes. And people would be on the stand and they would think they got away. And he'd be like, mic drop, I got you. I know what you did. And it was just, I was like, oh my gosh, that is me. Like, that is what I want to do in my life and in high school I even wrote this essay we had to write an essay in high school about like you know what do you want to be where do you think you want to go with your life and I was like the title of my essay was Metlock wannabe like I just wanted to be the female version of Metlock did not go to law school did end up in uh human resources and like Cassie ended up in a career that I really love and enjoy even though I didn't go um follow along the path of of Metlock you just made Matlock sound a lot more exciting than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to see if I can find that on Netflix. Um, well, Tony and Stephanie kind of started this, but um, telling us a little bit about their journey from this idea, these, these things that you wanted to be when you guys were in high school and how you landed in your careers that you are now. So I'm going to start back with Pat and just kind of tell us about kind of going from I have a variety of things. I'm not exactly sure. How did that lead you to Grant Thornton? Yes, thank you. Yeah, once I saw this you know, business documentary and I decided that that's what I wanted to be. I wanna be a business executive. Like Stephanie said, I didn't know what aspect of business. I just knew that I wanted to be uh, a business executive, you know, helping to solve problems, working with different people, and of course the big sofa in the background. Um, so I decided to to go on to college and study business studies. Um, I took a, a business studies degree undergrad and a major in accounting and economics. Um, and it was through that program, my accounting professor in my senior year, um, you know, I. For some reason, I just had a, a natural um, liking or aptitude for, for accounting. And he actually encouraged me to go on and study for the CPA exams, the 
Um, so I did. I went on and took the exams and became a certified public accountant. Um, so I started my career in the UK <clears throat> working as an accountant um, and um, studying for my CPA while I was working. Um, so I did that and I was working for this large media company at the time and had an opportunity to work on a systems implementation projects. You know, they were replacing our old accounting system. So I was working with these consultants that came in and were kind of understanding our business processes. Um, so I got to work with them on this project. And I kind of was intrigued by what they did because they just seemed like they just sat there and asked me all these questions and had me running around <laughs> doing all the work while they just sat there and I handed them everything. Um, so anyway, I became curious about their job and what it took to become a, an IT consultant. So I decided to go off and pursue a career in IT. Um, so I went back to college and then took a MIS, a Management Information Systems program and started working as an IT programmer and systems analyst. Um, I quickly moved up the ranks and became a project manager. Um, I guess my boss uh, realized that I was better at managing people and getting work done than I was at coding complex IT programs. Um, but anyway, I enjoyed everything and embraced everything. So I was like, okay, cool. I, you know, project manager, I think I can do this. So I did that and um, that really took me on my IT journey. Um, you know, I became an IT consultant. I got to travel the world working on these large global um, IT projects. And I guess I got to realize my dream of traveling the world, even though I didn't have a uniform as a flight attendant, but um, I got to see many different countries working with all these global companies. Um, and this eventually led me to my position in public accounting, uh, where I started working in IT risk and compliance. Um, working alongside um, financial accountants like Joseph, um, tax professionals like Cassie, and other IT professionals like myself, um, serving clients in many different industries um, with global operations. And that's really what brought me to GT. Um, I've done IT compliance um, for over 17, 18 years now. Um, but I, like I said, I joined GT a year ago, and this truly, truly feels like home. I, you know, I, I really... Um, love the culture here and I, I truly believe that this is where I'm meant to be so that's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> One of the things that you said Pat just kind of thematically that I heard throughout your story is this idea of becoming curious. Becoming curious to, to what this person is doing and this person's job so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit but I think that's very 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 interesting. So Joseph let's go over to you. You're at Eckert. <laughs> What happens? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll start off a little bit before Eckert um, and share a little bit about myself and my story, because I think that's kind of where it started. It started with my parents, really. And my parents immigrated from Guatemala and Central America, uh, came to the U.S. looking for a better opportunity. Uh, my dad um, moved to Colorado back in the 50s, and he worked in the fields and the farm fields, and my mom immigrated here and she was working in the factories uh, sewing. She was just sewing a lot of stuff. They ultimately came back to Dallas where they had a family. I was born and raised in Dallas and, and grew up in Oak Cliff. And my parents still live there in Oak Cliff and kind of the Hampton, Jefferson area, if some of you know that, that area. And ended up going to Sunset High School, uh, graduated way back in uh, 1995. So I can give you an idea of how old I am today. Um, but my parents really never pushed me on my education. I think part of it was because they never really finished um, secondary school themselves and they never went to college. But I would say is my dad was very strict. Um, in fact, he made me work um, in middle school and in high school. So I worked all the way through school. And really, I think this um, help me provide me for the strong work, that, work ethic I have today. That's one thing that my parents do have is a strong work work ethic that they instilled in me. And this work ethic really motivated me uh, to want to extend my education and to ultimately go into college. I first went to Stephen F. Austin my freshman year and I ended up at Stephen F. Austin because one of our uh, counselors at Sunset uh, took a group of students for a tour and we toured the campus and really enjoyed it. Uh, ended up going there. I ended up spending one year there um, just it was a little harder than, than I expected just being away from home. Uh, so I came back home, lived, lived at home and 
enrolled at the University of Texas here in Arlington. So um, I was able to come back and stay local and live, live at home. Uh, so I was ever just commuting, commuting to Arlington from Oak Cliff. And I worked at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. So uh, going from Eckerd's and then Enterprise Rent-A-Car, I was uh, worked at the dealerships and rent as a rental agent, really just to pay my way through school. Um, and then ultimately got a, uh, like I said, I, was, I thought I was going to be a pharmacist, but then I ultimately started getting into business, did accounting, met a lot of great students, had some good professors, and ultimately um, became an accountant. I interviewed with Grant Thornton, um, ultimately got a job here at Grant Thornton. Already, it's been, 20, like I said, 20 years ago, um, interviewed with a partner that sits not too far from me that is still around, and he gave me an opportunity to be where I'm at. Um, I ultimately did take a a certified public exam, which is an exam to be a certified accountant. I ended up passing that. Um, it did take me three three times to to pass it, but ultimately pass it. I think I really studied hard to to do that. And one thing that I really enjoy about Grant Thorne is I've been able to jo- to travel around the world as, as well. I've lived and worked uh, around the world with Grant Thornton. Uh, I lived two years in China. Uh, I lived two years in Brazil, and I lived about six months in Australia, ultimately coming back uh, to the U.S. where I'm here in the Dallas office where I'm, where I'm at today. And I would say the other part that I really enjoy, and I think that I'm still here, and, and what I love about my career and the journey is that I've just had good mentors along the way, and I love mentoring other people as well. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a great ride. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I love the idea, you know, just thinking about how your family participation came, you know, um, just fed into who you who you were able to become and working from the pharmacy to um, to also working at the rental car place really gives you a broad range of, of skills that you can you can use in other careers. So thanks Absolutely. for sharing, Joseph. Yeah. Jessica, what's your journey? <laughs> yes. So, you know, in high school, I had taken these surveys, you know, where you try to figure out like which path you want to take. And transparently, like every top answer I got, I was like, but I don't want to do that, though. <laughs> I was like, I get you saying like I could be good at it, but I actually want to enjoy going to work every day. So I knew So I went to school. Right. And I was like, I just I want to major in something in business. I wasn't quite sure what that was, but I was like, you know, I felt like the first couple of years are going to be pretty standard anyway and I would figure it out along the way and so um, by the time I figured out that human resources was the way I wanted to go my school at the time didn't actually have that as a major but I had this really wonderful and extremely challenging marketing professor and I enjoyed him so much just because he challenged me so much so I was like okay I think I'll just hang out with you and do all my emphasis classes in marketing so I actually got um, a degree of business in business administration with an emphasis in marketing. And then I went to graduate school and did an MBA with an emphasis in human resources, which is where I knew I ultimately wanted to be. And so from there, I've had the opportunity to work in HR in quite a few industries, government, hospitality, retail, and here I am now at professional services. Lovely, lovely. And I, and I think maybe we'll have some time later to talk a little bit more about what all HR encompasses. One of the teachers has put that in our chat for us. Um, Stephanie, tell us about your journey. Sure, absolutely. So college was always going to be in the future based on my family's experience and pursuit of success. I come from a rather large family. I'm the 47th grandchild and our ethics in our family are, is just to work hard and to, to be successful. So there was absolutely you know, no room for, I'm not gonna go to college. <laughs> so after graduating from the University of Texas in Austin with a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics, I applied for a full-time job at a state agency where I was interning during college and I got that job. I was actually an auditor for just a few few years. And then I moved to Dallas and began working for IBM where I did both sales and marketing roles. I was with IBM for 20 years and during my last 10 years there, I was in a global role where I was able to work with people around the entire world from Africa to India 
to countries in Europe. And I was also able to make numerous international trips to meet with clients and IBM teams around the world that I was working with. That role gave me so much exposure in my career that challenged me in so many ways that helped me grow and learn. And while I was at IBM, I was able to get my master's in organizational management from Dallas Baptist University. I then decided that it was time to start another chapter and I made my way to Grant Thornton two and a half years ago and it has been one of the best decisions of my career. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm a regional marketing leader. I'm absolutely just love my job and the ways that I get to do some creative things and work with our sales team to engage with clients. My job is ultimately to help our organization create as many sales opportunities for our firm as possible. And I truly love what I do and enjoy working with my colleagues. I love that. I love that. And so interesting about the international travel. I see some students added some questions about that that we'll get to later. So fantastic. Tony, you started a little bit telling us about your journey. Want to want to close that for us? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. And um, I kind of had a more of a non-traditional route to get to where I am today. Um, uh, I've been in, like I said, I've been in business development and, and sales my entire career. Um, I majored in business administration. Uh, I started school at the University of Colorado at Boulder, which happens to be my hometown. Uh, and after a couple of years um, at CU, I transferred to Howard University. And that's where I actually received my diploma from. Um, so after graduation, uh, it, was a, it was really bad economic times then. And so trying to find a job was really challenging. But I got super lucky because a friend uh, recommended me for uh, a new role at an investment management firm. This was in Denver and it was, you know, kind of a stuffy firm and a big high rise. And I was a young guy, you know, wearing, you know, a suit and tie and wingtips and cufflinks. I had no idea what I was up against, but I had great mentors that helped me in that job and really developed uh, a, a great, uh, I think, uh, um, backbone and uh, great guidance and mentorship for me to be successful there. And our firm became you know, real successful and growed real quick, growed, was growing real quickly. Um, but then I was recruited by a larger firm um, after about eight years. And, and so that larger firm was Goldman Sachs. And I went to go to work for Goldman Sachs first in New York. Uh, and then they moved me to Dallas. So that's how I got to Dallas back in 2006. Uh, and I did that Goldman gig for a few years and the economy got bad again. Uh, I started knocking on the door at a couple of different firms uh, and started working for a small accounting firm in Dallas. Did that for 10 years. Uh, really had some great success there along the way. Uh, and the nice thing about all these jobs that I had in the past, it just helped me build a great base of contacts and a great base of a, of a network uh, and really helped you know, build my reputation in the marketplace. Uh, and so one thing led to another and uh, ended up interviewing at Grant Thornton um, back in 2017 and they hired me. And I think uh, one of the primary reasons they hired me was because of my you know, track record of business contacts and my network and also uh, your reputation in the marketplace. And, and so that really helped me, um, I think, build a really solid base and background and help my business today uh, at Grant Thornton. But we like the culture here. We like the people and uh, looking forward to a long career at GT. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that with us, Tony. And last but not least, we're going to move up to Cassie. Hey, thanks. I'm hoping my puppy will um, cooperate. That's the barking you hear in the background. Um, so even though, and I know I mentioned I'm a first generation college graduate, even though that's the case, my parents always expected that I would go to college, always did well academically. Um, and so I did know that I wanted to go to college. And I, I too liked I always worked from the time I could get a job at 14. I think my first job was, they called me a salad girl. I filled up salads at a restaurant. Um, I've done all sorts of jobs that made me confident that I wanted a career, that I didn't want to just uh, flounder around and have a job. Um, I worked in a bank um, during high school and college. I worked in a grocery store as a bookkeeper. Um and ultimately went to college and started out as, as a biology major to be a pediatrician. 
and quickly switched uh, to business based on, you know, really feeling like accounting made sense. And it was something that I liked the fact that a lot of people were scared of it, that it was, it kind of had a reputation for being something that people, some people didn't understand. So I liked that aspect of it. And it just, um, I got a lot of satisfaction from working through issues and problems and understanding new concepts. So ultimately got my bachelor's in accounting and, um, you know, once I got to school, I really sought out, you know, what are my, what are my other high performing peers doing to understand what their options are with this degree and what do I need to be doing and ultimately joined Beta Alpha Psi, which is a, um, an organization for accounting students that really was useful for me in understanding how internships worked and what classes I should be taking and what should I be doing over the summer. And ultimately that kind of showed me that, you know, I, I needed to take the CPA exam, which, which meant I needed more hours in certain um, subjects, which led me to just um, do the five year, there's a five year program at the school that I was at that allowed me to get my bachelor's and my master's in five years and um, graduate kind of with both of those. And so I did that and ultimately just asked around and tried to really glean information from others that were ahead of me in the program to figure out what area I wanted to work in and ultimately landed on tax because I wanted that kind of community feel of being in a tax department with other folks. Um, and, you know, when I went and started recruiting at firms, my, my personality is very much, um, I like to be somewhere where I feel like I can make a change and I can have an impact and people will know who I am. And, um, you know, I would have a, a group of, of people that I felt close to. So I interviewed with a lot of firms and Grant Thornton and ultimately decided on Grant Thornton because I felt the best connection to leadership and to people that would be my peers and knew that uh, I'm the type of person that as long as I believed in leadership and I believed in the direction the firm was going that I likely would stick around, which I have. And if I see something that I don't like um, or something that I don't think is working, I jump in there and try and change it. Um, and so I've always appreciated that about GT, that um, my voice is heard and I can have an impact. Um, and love the clients, love the people, the people on this panel with me. I get to work with a ton of great people. Um, I love my clients. I like the mix of, you know, we do a lot of recruiting and dealing with students. We do a lot of um, culture building things. And then obviously the client work and consulting on tax matters and preparing tax returns. So I feel like it's a very well-rounded career. And um, I ultimately went to GT because that's where my heart was and I wanted to be happy. And I really didn't want to um, be moving often. I love that. I love the idea of looking for a company that aligns with your personal values, right? And, and where you see yourself. That's great. That's great. Thanks, Cassie. So now we kind of want to get into the nitty gritty of what you guys do every day in the workplace. And as you're explaining, I want you to think of it like this. We have probably close to 200 students viewing and you have the potential to pull these students into your department based on what you say. So this is this is workforce development here. So, um, so Tony, I'm going to start with you. Give them a description of what a typical workday looks like for you and then what you love most about it. Sure, that's a really good question. Um, I love what I do. So in my role, uh, I'm constantly <clears throat> finding ways to keep our services um, of Grant Thornton top of mind with clients. So with that said, I spend a lot of time uh, checking, and checking and sending emails you know, researching uh, news on clients and the markets that we cover, and also you know, hunting for new opportunities to find companies who want to buy our services as well. Uh, and another part of my role is I really um, am focused on trying to get our partners, you know, like Cassie and Joseph and Pat, introduced to professionals and companies that want to buy our services as well. So I think for me, what, what do I love about that role? And that's the independence is really great. The freedom is great. Um, I like the variety 
Uh, I get to work with a lot of different partners and a lot of different service lines that we offer um, across the audit tax and advisory service lines. Um, I also like learning and collaborating to find solutions for clients. You know, I'll get, I'll get calls. Actually, I'll, I'll have texts or emails from clients like three in the morning. Hey, can you help me with this? You know, and I love trying to find solutions for them uh, for the challenges that they're facing. Um, but you know, honestly, you know, I'm in a client facing role. So, you know, I have to admit, I really enjoy, you know, entertaining clients at great restaurants, concerts and sporting events. It's pretty fun to do that. Um, but it also can be tiring, but, you know, all those things just make my role like super exciting. Uh, and, and it's one of those things that I just feel like it comes to me naturally. And I think the clients you know, really enjoy um, the, 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 the end game of, you know, us being able to take care of them and making them feel better about hiring Grant Thornton and also making themselves look good in front of their owners and clients uh, and, and, and their bosses. So uh, that's just a, a great thing I like about my, my, my role. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a busy day. I think all of us are always busy, you know, throughout our, 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 our long days, 12, 14 hour days sometimes. Uh, but man, it's really rewarding and I wouldn't give it up for anything. As you were speaking, Tony, one of the students typed in the Q&A. So you're saying you get free tickets to Cowboys games. That's <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to go up to Jessica. Jessica, tell us what a typical work day looks like for you. Yeah, so typical work day for me does not include free tickets to the Cowboys games. <laughs> However, <laughs> however, I do love what I do as well. So um, for me in my role, there are days like today where I get to participate on panels like this one and speak to the bright minds of the future, which is something that's really important to me. I just feel like there are so many people that have poured into me and I really count it as a privilege to be able to speak with you all today and be able to pour back into you. So just thank you for even um, your attention and your time and joining us today but my role at the firm is uh, focused on the firm's diversity recruiting strategy. So most days for me are meetings where I get to work on really cool strategy as it relates to meeting our goals, planning and preparing for events, speaking at recruiting events, creating partnerships, working on new programs. And most, I'm sure you probably can tell, right? Like I'm pretty passionate about DEI and what I do. So for me um, to be in a role where I'm getting paid to do what I love to do, what I'm passionate about doing, Doing, it's like you know a dream come true. So um, being able to be able to work in this DEI space and create and implement programming to help meet our DEI goals is just absolutely amazing. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, I want to explain a little bit. So DEI is the diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yes. So, um, that uh, so sometimes corporations will really want to take an emphasis into this. And so they have departments that really make sure that they are, I don't know, what's how do we say it, Jessica, that make sure that they are implementation implementing. Yeah, and that we're meeting our goals. Our firm actually like published a report is on our website. If anybody's interested in looking where we said to the world, like here are our goals as it relates to diversity, equity and inclusion. And so in my role, I get to strategize and be creative about how we're gonna actually meet those goals. So really cool stuff. So that's a really cool tidbit for you guys, students. Like if you wanna go look at GTs, but companies, places where you shop, places where you eat, you can always go on the website of companies and see what their DEI initiatives are. So that's a really good tidbit. Thanks for sharing, Jessica. Yes. All right. So I'm going to move over to Pat. Pat, what's a typical work day look for? I know you're not busy often, so <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I'm not busy. No, never, never too busy. <laughs> I say that my with my job, there's no such thing as a typical day for me. Uh, and I say that because no day is identical, right? Every day looks different. I feel like sometimes I'm working in a circus, juggling multiple balls <laughs> at one time. <laughs> um, but so my day um, and com comprises of lots of meetings. Uh, so many different meetings for clients, for internal meetings, um, but like Tony was saying, it's really um, collaborating with different teams, both internally and externally, to help solve different business issues, whether it's my client issues or operational issues within the firm. Um, but really, it's just working with teams. I never do anything on my own. Um, there's always a team involved, um, whether it's a different group, a different service line. Uh, there's always teams involved. 
Um, I spent a lot of time also recruiting um, for the firm. Um, and a big part of my job, which I just love, is coaching and mentoring our younger professionals. I really love that aspect. And sometimes, you know, I know I've changed careers many times and sometimes I feel like I should uh, maybe have followed down Jessica's path and gone down human resources because I do spend a lot of time talking to people, um, coaching and mentoring, um, but I get to do it as part of the job that I'm doing here today. So, um, so I love it, uh, but that's where I spend a big part of my time. Um, you know, we work in professional services and our people are our biggest assets, right? Without our people, we can't do the work that we do. Um, so taking care of our people is very, very important to, to myself and my firm. And that's really what we build our culture on is the values that we hold um, to make sure that we're not only taking care of our people, but we're also taking care of our clients and our business. Um, so different ways, I come up with creative ways to recruit and retain our people, try to make their job exciting, try to find ways to alleviate any issues that they have, you know, challenges that may get in the way of them doing their work. Um, but I also get to participate in a lot of um, variety um, of initiatives that the firm has um, related to um, DE&I, diversity, equity and inclusion and get to attend, you know, different exciting events like the one here today, you know, so really excited um, to be here and uh, participate in this um, event. Um, and hopefully we'll get to, um, you know, have more of these where we can come and back and talk to you about different aspects of what we do. I love that. I want these to be a part of your typical day. So that's my, that's my goal for you. <laughs> your typical day, all the work, JA, and then more work. <laughs> Great, great. Cassie, what does a typical day look like for you? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I had a minor little, someone was knocking at my door and the dog started freaking out. So the, the typical day at home usually includes some of that. But um, so my role, I'm, a, I'm the tax practice leader. We have about 85 tax folks in our Dallas office. So I'm responsible for kind of just the day-to-day -day of running, you know, making decisions about how many students are we going to hire off campus, um, running that whole process, dealing with, you know, the needs of our folks. Plus, I'm on the client serving side. So my day is typically um, filled with lots and lots of emails and meetings and calls. Um, I would say at my level, it's less about doing tax work and more about um, figuring out what direction we're going to go in as a group, figuring out what my client's needs are. Certainly um, in the tax space, I'm sure all of you know, it's when the president changes, the tax law changes as well quite often. So anticipating what, the, what our client's needs are going to be and planning for that. Um, but it's interesting because when I started at the firm in 97, I think we had just gotten an email, but it nothing ever showed up. And we weren't even sure if we got an email. It was it okay to respond to it. Like, is that a thing? Um, and now, you know, you just, you, we get lots and lots of emails about lots of different things. Um, and so, you know, staying on top of that and making sure that I'm available to people that need me, but lots of, um, Client meetings, lots of phone calls, lots of emails, and then some review mixed in there as well. Lovely. Relationships, like Tony, right? It's about relationships and relationship building. It really is. And I don't know that I realized that before I got into the career. I mean, I thought, well, I'm good at math. It's a numbers game. You know, I'll be, I'll be trying to find the right answer. And really what I found once I got into it is it's all about relationships with clients, relationships with our people, finding the best answer, not the right answer, because there's often more than one. Um, and really just building relationships and teaching and training others. Lovely, lovely. Thanks, Cassie. Yeah. Stephanie, I'm going to come over to you. What's a typical workday look like for you? And what do you love most about it? Thank you. So a typical day for me starts around 7, 7.30 a.m. right here in my home office. I spend most of my time in meetings with my marketing team and with partners of our firm discussing programs and events that we're going to do with our clients so that we can increase our engagement with them. I develop a lot of presentations 
and spreadsheets to illustrate our ideas and concepts. But I also meet with people outside of the firm that help us bring unique experiences to our clients. My day usually will wrap up around 6, 6.30, just depends on what's going on and depends on what's going to happen the next day. So sometimes uh, maybe an hour later, maybe an hour earlier, but it's usually a very full day filled with uh, lots of emails, lots of meetings. And again, you, you talked about relationships. Uh, the relationships really matter um, in how we do business, both inside our firm and outside our firm. Now, you said, what do I like most about my job? It's very creative. And I have responsibilities to plan and execute those events and programs across our firm, across our region with 17 different offices. And what I love most is that I have autonomy to do some really cool things for our clients, such as put on events where we're doing some tastings. You know, this past December, we did a huge wine and cheese event. We had more than 300 people that came into a virtual experience. And that's really cool. Uh, but we also do in-person events. So I have to think about the total experience that our clients are going to have with us from what does the invitation look like? Where are we going to hold the actual event? Is it going to be virtual or is it going to be in person? How many people are we expecting? Does our platform, will it, will it, um, is it, is it big enough for the number of people that we know might come? The hospitality experience, such as the food and the wine, and all the way down to the thank yous that we might give to the speakers who, who join us. It's a very, very creative aspect um, in my, into my day-to-day -day job. Lovely, lovely. Thank you so much. And then we're gonna go on over to Joseph. <laughs> so I would say my typical work day starts off with my three-year-old twins coming down the stairs from upstairs to uh, to the side of my bed and saying, daddy, the sun's up, sun's up, wake up. <laughs> That's how I usually start my day. Um, it's been, it's been interesting because uh, after COVID, we've uh, had the opportunity to work at home a lot. And so that's been great because I've been able to uh, spend some time more with my family in the mornings. We have breakfast together. But as soon as right after I'm having breakfast and, and energized, I really start reading the, the, the news and the current events that's going on. Uh, I think it's very important to really understand what's going around in your city, your community, um, in your country or around the world. Um, I think these current events really helps me have discussions with my colleagues or my clients because a lot of times um, the events that are happening around our country and the world does impact uh, a lot of our clients and, and it impacts our business or it's impacting our people. So it's good really to be aware of what's kind of what's kind of happening, right? And so I do that usually in the morning and then and then my day is really spread out with, with meetings or video conferences now, which is more common than, than pre-COVID, or um, phone calls or lunch meetings. And I'm really meeting with the rare, rarity people. I'm meeting with my colleagues, uh, my team, or my clients, uh, really making sure whatever project I may have going on, that we're discussing the timeline of the project, that we're still meeting, um, the deadlines that's upon us or if there's any issues or technical accounting issues that I need to investigate, uh, that we're looking at those. Because ultimately my job, as I mentioned before, is really to certify the financial information of companies. So that's my, I would say my, the, the biggest responsibility that I have. And so I have teams that help me do that. And that really means that we're involved and we're looking at companies' records and their financial records to make sure that, that it's accurate. So we're investigating uh, we're looking at documents, and so I'm helping my team, uh, making sure and directing them that we are complying with our rules, and also that our, our companies and our clients are compl complying with rules that are set out by our government or regulatory bodies um, to make sure all the financial information that they're disclosing 
is, is accurate and people can rely on that financial information. So that's really what I'm doing is investigating. And part of that, again, as I mentioned, is just meeting day to day. But another part of my job is also making sure we're, we're winning new business. So I'm usually um, out um, with lunches or dinners, um, entertaining prospects or existing clients. Sometimes I also get to go to a Cowboys game where I'll take a, a client or a prospect and uh, I love the Cowboys. So go Cowboys. We, we have a good record, right? So uh, really excited about this season, but it's, it's been fun. And I, and I, the other part that I enjoy is I get to mentor uh, younger people. I already mentioned this before. And I, I think a lot of us have mentioned this and really mentor people that have similar backgrounds as me, um, younger people, I think that's probably one of the uh, most important parts of my, I wouldn't even call it my job, but just my day to day that I'm talking to younger people, really understanding what uh, drives them and really give them advice and coaching. Um, and I usually do, I'm doing that uh, mostly every day. And then I wrap up my day by, you know, uh, setting my agenda for, for tomorrow and making sure I have my to-do list for tomorrow and, wrap up my day and uh, I'm there with, with family. But before I would say one thing I did want to add though is um, pre COVID, I used to travel a lot. I used to travel around the world uh, quite often and around the country. Uh, I haven't traveled as much this past year uh, given the, the existing environment, but I think hopefully that'll start to pick back up uh, hopefully next year. But that's something that I also enjoy to, to travel. Awesome. Thanks, Joseph. And listening to all of you guys speak about a typical workday and, and what it is that you're doing, I could hear some, some, um, some themes in there just about like relationship building, the creativity, um, some, some independence and autonomy to make some decisions for, for your team, for yourselves. Um, problem solving was one that I heard, right? Was just the ability to make things to make things work out to figure out what's needed and these are all skills that students can start working on now and um in the way that they are um showing up at school in their classes in any clubs that they may be in church groups these are all things that in essence really push you forth to being a good leader so thank you guys for sharing all of that now in every job, and we've talked about all of the great stuff at GT, and all of the and um, uh, and all of the great culture and what you love. So I'm gonna pick on a couple of people that want to tell us what is the most challenging part of your job. What is the part that you could give back that you would happily give back if you could? Uh, Tony, you want to take us there? Sure, great. I, I love this question. Um, so a lot of folks talk about this, this daily grind of calls, and emails, and meetings. It, it sometimes gets kind of crazy, you know. And you'll 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 wake up and log on and your computer and look at your calendar, and you're you're literally back to back meetings for the next six hours. You might have a break for lunch if you're lucky. So sometimes that gets kind of that gets kind of draggy. Gets gets kind of old. Um, but I, I think also uh, a funny thing that happens with with me and my relationship role, um, I think that happens to you know everyone uh, on this call as well, is that we deal with a lot of different people and personalities. Um, and that can sometimes be kind of challenging. You know, some people are fun, some are laid back and easy to work with, and others are not. Uh, so being able to adapt to these adverse situations, I think is really important for us. But it's like, wow, sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, do I really have to go through this person's attitude right now? You know, it becomes overwhelming sometimes. But, you know, if you just kind of, you know, put a different focus on your face and, and try to get through it, it makes it much easier. Um, and I think also uh, another thing that, that's, that's tough on me is, you know, these cowboy games and dinners are great, but it also comes along with having to do an expense report. So you have to report, you know, what we spent on client activity throughout the month. And, you know, for me, I need to do it like, every day or every week, but I wait till the end of the month to do it. So it really stacks up and becomes a pain. So I think those are the things that sometimes I see challenging in my job. Thanks. I love that. Love that. And Tony, I mean, you're getting calls at 3 a.m. So. Yeah. Or text. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love it. What about you, Stephanie? What's the most challenging part of your job? 
Well, you all have heard me talk about the fact that there are 17 offices in the central region and each one has unique needs and events that they want my team to manage and to take on. So it can be a little hard to juggle all of them at the same time. You know, each one of those offices will reach out and, and say, hey, we've got this idea or we've, we really want to do this, this meeting or this event. So there are a lot of moving parts and I never want any of those offices to feel like we can't help them connect with clients to drive business with the firm. So you might imagine I have to have some strong project management skills to keep things organized. And that's where my master's degree in organizational management comes into play. But then sometimes I have to put my sales hat on and I may have to negotiate with the leaders in all of those offices on how we can make it work and I have to look for solutions to get it done. That might mean me asking members of their own team to help us or consider some flexibility on when we get it done, but we, did, we get it done. Um, some days are hard. Uh, some days you feel like, you know, they're, you're in, in back to back to back to back to back meetings. And um, but then that, you know, you'll, the next two days won't be as difficult and you'll start to see how incredible some of the events we put on and the, the words and feedback from our clients and our partners on the experience that our clients are having. That's what gets me through those tough days. Mm, I love that. I love that. That's the, you know, having good relationships and, you know, and being a problem solver, there's, that's that, that's that backside of it, right? It's like, cause we can't turn our minds off. You know, we, no matter how hard we try. Great. Pat, I'm going to go with you. What is the most challenging part of what you do? Yeah, I think what I find most challenging about my job is actually also what I find most exciting about my job, uh, which is juggling multiple um, and competing priorities. Um, I think my, it keeps my job interesting and unpredictable, um, but it's of course sometimes means that I don't get to do everything that I plan to do each day uh, because A, there are just not enough hours to do everything or because they're higher priorities um, that pop up throughout the day. Um, but like I said, in my role as the central region leader for my group, you know, I serve over a hundred different clients, uh, which means working with multiple teams um, and sometimes things come up on each team will have a challenge, right? And it's trying to make sure that my teams have what they need to do their jobs, right? Or maybe somebody leaves the firm, which throws everything, you know, for a loop with that team, because now they're scrambling to find another team member to get the work done. So it's just dealing with all these challenges and issues as they come up. But um, I think I've had a number of years experience. So, you know, being able to problem solve and just jump in and, you know, just believe in that anything is possible, right? I think I just embrace the challenges and just figure out the best solution that I can. And just knowing that sometimes there is no right answer, right, for, for every problem. So it's just, like I said, prioritizing um, and juggling each day. So love that. I love that. those organizational skills and being able to prioritize is so important even for students now, right? Like they'll even, even for everything that they have on their plates now. Well, I want to talk to, I'm going to ask Joseph, um, is there anything that you would have done differently in your career path looking back? Yeah, I would, I would start off. And that was a little hard, hard question because I would say, um, based on where I'm at today and, and the background that I had as a young kid coming out from growing up in Oak Cliff, I feel at least I've been fortunate enough in my career. Um, I've been with, with my company for, like I said, almost 22 years now. So during those 22 years, I've, I've been able to travel the world. I've seen so many things that i never would have expected uh, when I was a young kid in, in high school. I mean, I've traveled like I mentioned already where I've lived in three countries, but I also traveled over 40 countries around the world. So it's really hard for me to see what I would have done differently. Um, but I think one thing, if I did have to do something differently, I probably would have um, continued in school. I would have probably gotten my master's in business administration. So that's a, an MBA. 
And I think the reason being is it probably would have helped me a little bit more in other parts of our business. So in an accounting degree, I'm able to uh, be an expert in providing accounting services to our clients, right? But with an MBA, it probably would also help me just kind of managing our own internal business or our business at Grant Thornton um, and get a different perspective. So maybe that's something that I would have done a little different. And I think I also would have done something different and, and which I highly recommend you do now is read a lot more. I think I would have read a lot more books because I think uh, there's a lot of power in knowledge and you get a lot of that knowledge in reading books. So I think I would have read more. I love that. Thanks, Joseph. Jessica, what about you? Is there anything you would have done differently on your career path? Yes, hands down, I will tell you, I wish I would have pursued internships and early career programs a whole lot earlier because a whole lot of jobs like coming straight out of college are already filled with people who have completed internships. And the earlier you can start talking to um, a company and building those relationships, the better off you'll be. So at GT, for example, we have a freshman program. When you're a freshman year in college, you can be a part of our Empower program. So you can go ahead, start getting to know GT. You can join us for some professional development, get a mentor, get connected with our business resource groups, et cetera. Let's say you go through that and you're like, oh my gosh, I really like GT. I would love to continue this relationship. We have a sophomore rotation program. So then the summer after your sophomore year, you're able to do um, a rotation program. You're able to do some job shadowing. You're able to really hone in on who GT is, get to know our culture. Think about what you wanna do in terms of next steps in your career. And then guess what? The summer after your junior year, there's a full-time internship program where you'll spend about 12 weeks with us, right? 10 to 12 weeks. And then at the end of that internship is when we make full-time offers. So people then go back to college, they go into their senior year of college and they already have a job when they graduate. So they can just focus on school their senior year and then they graduate and then they come back and join GT. And that was something that I did not do earlier in my career. I was more focused on just like working versus thinking about, okay, I need to get an internship so that I already have a job when I graduate from college versus having to look for one. So definitely encourage you. I tell, I'll tell you now, it's never too early to start building those relationships and start thinking about who you might want to work for. And especially if you can do that in college and get insight into the culture and get insight into, you know, if this is a place where you really want to build your career. And like with Grant Thornton, there are so many jobs. So let's say you joined us your freshman year and you're in the Empower program and you're like, well, I don't know, like, I think maybe I'm interested in audit or maybe I'm interested in tax or maybe I'm interested in advisory or maybe I'm interested in human resources, which is what I work in, right? And so it really gives you that opportunity and that exposure to what day-to-day -day life, life is like at a company versus just, you know, the book side or the school side of it. So that would be the one thing I definitely would have done differently. Love that. And that's such great advice, Jessica. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes. Well, as we move um, closer to the end of our time, I want to make sure that we jump into some student questions. And so we actually have quite a few that have come through. So the first one, I'm actually going to throw it to Cassie. Um, Pat answered, um, answered a little bit, but I want to give you the opportunity to speak on it as well. One of our students wanted to know, how do you become a partner and an owner? And do you receive money or any type of compensation for that? Yes, that's a great question. And, and something that you know, it's a long path to get to the partner position. Um, you work really hard for 10 plus years and you continue to develop skills along the way. So I think that key, you know, if you ultimately want to be a partner in a firm and there's, there's nothing like being a business owner. Um, I will say I've always enjoyed my roles at the firm and felt supported and, um, but there is a different feeling of being an owner of the firm, right? There's a, there's a feeling of, of needing to provide for your employees and needing to be a steward of the business. But I think if you really want to make it to partner, you have to, from the very beginning, have a long view of defining success and thinking about where you're going to spend your time and build your skills. Um, because it does take going through some rough years, right? Or maybe you had a particularly busy year where you worked a ton of hours, but you have to step back and think about, well, what, what did I gain from a skills perspective? Am I a better professional now than I was a year ago? 
how can I mitigate and try not to have it be so hard next year, right? And that kind of has to be your attitude. And I think that the other thing is, is that from the very beginning, you need to think about what does it take to be a partner? What is the expectation? Find another partner that you connect, find a partner that you connect with very early on and talk to them and say, what should I be doing even though I'm just an associate and I'm 10 years away? What should I be doing at my level to build those skills and to build the network that will allow me to be a partner? Um, and so that's all of the hard part and really just kind of being a person that is positive and a leader and wants to affect positive change because that's what you're looking for to inspire others. Um, and then on the positive front, yes, as an owner of the firm, um, I, if the firm does better, I do better. Um, and um, there is there is financial reward there for sure. And with any, you know, high paying um, career, there is a lot of pressure and a lot of expectations. But um, certainly the feeling of being a partner is is one that is um, hard to replicate in any other way. Great, great. Joseph, is there anything you'd like to add to that as well? Um, I would say, you know, the, the, to the path of partner, just along with Cassie was saying is, the expectations is that you stay uh, technically competent uh, because especially, and it depends where you're at, right? So if you're working in an accounting firm, which is the example we're given is, and Cassie's in tax. And, and so she needs to be a tax expert. So she always needs to be up to date with all the tax rules and the regulations, which are very complicated because that's what our clients are paying for us to do is to advise them um, on, on certain regulations. So like for me, I'm in the audit side. So what that means is my clients are paying us or paying Grant Thornton a fee so we can provide them technical expertise to make sure that they're following all the accounting rules um, and their bookkeeping rules. So I need to be very technical, stay up to date on all the, the, the new rules that come out every year. Um, I need to understand the, the complexity of the accounting issues. So it's, I'm always studying. And I think as a partner, you're always going to be studying. You're always going to be learning new things to stay up to date in your expertise. So you can, you can be relied upon because that's what our clients are paying us for is our expertise. So if I give them wrong advice, and they execute on that advice, that could lead them to getting into trouble for, for some reason and or, or their investors getting upset with them. So there's a consequence of financial penalties, if you will, um, if they're not compliant. So there's a lot of pressure there. Uh, and to be able to withstand that pressure, you also have to be, I think, a well-rounded individual. And then I would say from the financial reward, as Cassie mentioned, there, there's a great financial reward because as a partner or a business owner, we all have a percentage of the business's profit. So whatever the, the firm makes in, their, in money in one given year, then I get a percentage of those profits. And that's how we share the income among the, all the business owners. And that's like in any other business, right? If you are a sole owner, then all the profits of the business are yours. Um, if you're in business with 500 other people, then you may allocate and share that pie, if you will. Um, but that's, that is part of being a professional is there is a lot of financial reward and financial success that gives you a lot opportunity to have a, a really good life and, and travel and buy things that you, you want. So, uh, I would really encourage you. Wonderful. Thanks, Joseph and Cassie, both for explaining that process. Um, we have a question and I'm going to throw it out to Jessica. Um, one of our students would like to know, can you work at GT without a college degree? Yeah, so we do have some opportunities. And honestly, it kind of just depends on the role, right? So if you want to be uh, Joseph or, or Cassie, then you're going to have to have a degree and you're going to have to eventually get that, that CPA in terms of becoming a partner, right? But it just depends on your career path and what it is that you want to do. I will say for most roles, there is a degree requirement, but there may be some opportunities where um, a college degree isn't required. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Jessica. I guess I'll kind of stay with you and then we'll pass it around. Sounds good. Now, what the students want to know is, do you guys make a lot of money? <laughs> <laughs> Not be the right person to answer that question, actually. <laughs> well, I guess it would depend on how you qualify. 
a lot um, <laughs> first, but I'll, I'll also say that, you know, it kind of just depends on, on your role as well, right, in terms of your compensation. So as Joseph just mentioned, and as Cassie explained, as it relates to, you know, being a part of the partnership versus being um, an employee. And again, it's going to uh, come down to a lot to what the role is and years of experience that are required and to your um, the level of expertise that you can provide. So as Joseph was just mentioning, right, like people are depending on him to give him like sound advice. So that's again, as Cassie mentioned, a lot of pressure, right? And so with pressure sometimes comes with reward. So it really just depends on um, on your role in terms of like the actual scale of pay. Yeah, and just how you how you move up. Pat, do you have anything you want to add to that? Working with the young professionals? No, I would say aim high, right? The, there's a lot of potential to earn a lot. So <laughs> Other than getting a, a good salary as a, an employee or as a partner, there's also the opportunity to get bonuses, right? We offer bonuses. So we reward hard work. So if you come in and learn your craft, um, you know, execute well, do a great job, then you also have the opportunity to um, earn a bonus, uh, which the firm pays out every year. Um, so, yes, there is a potential to earn a lot of money, but you got to work for it. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. And I know we have several folks that carry a CPA. One of the students wants to know, is there any advice for the CPA exam? And is accounting for our accounting jobs, is it better to have a master's degree? Take that. Um, I would say I would advise anybody that wants to consider public accounting and really is focused on a career versus a job, um, which they're different, right? A career tends to demand more of you. It's very, um, it's usually more lucrative. A job may be less stressful, which is maybe what some people want, but it tends to not have the upside as well. Um, but I would encourage anyone to get their CPA. I would encourage them to get there. You're going to need practically a master's anyways to have the hours to take the exam. So it's, while it's not required, I would encourage it because it's pretty uh, common. Um, and so if not, you don't have something that most of your peers do. And as far as the CPA exam, I always tell students, if you have the ability to have your last semester be exam prep or delay starting work by six months. Um, you know, we'll, we'll hire you and give you six months off before you start to let you study for and pass the exam. Um, I always encourage people. I didn't do it that way. I wasn't able to. I needed to get to work so I could pay my rent. Um, but it's much easier to do while you're still in college study mode and before you have this new, exciting, demanding career that at times may have you working nights and weekends. So think about doing that and then needing to go home and study for the CPA exam. But I always tell people anything you can knock out before you start your career is great. If not, there's review courses, you know, you can schedule it out and break it up into chunks, get a plan together, communicate your plan to whoever you work for, get their buy-in because we want our, we want to help our people get it too, right? So, um, but it's like having a second job until you get it out of the way, I will say. Good, good. Thanks, yeah. Cassie. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, I think your pitch was really successful because we have a comment that says, I like Stephanie's job. I want to be on her team. <laughs> but I want to throw another question out at you. Someone asked um, about working in other countries. Are, is that something that's scary to do? And do you get to bring your family along in those cases? Great questions. You know, I think Anytime you do something for the first time can be scary, but you got to do your research, do your homework, study the country, know more about the culture, the environment, the demographics, and do your homework to help you determine if, is this right for me? And is this right for my family? But you see it all the time that many professionals are able to bring their families and you know, you've got Joseph as an example who lived abroad. I'm not sure that he had a family at that time, but it is, it is so, it is still so possible. 
And when you when when you get a chance to live in a country and take in all the cultures, it gives you just a whole different, it opens up so many different perspectives. And to have that as a part of your resume, let me tell you, that will open so many doors. So never allow, oh my gosh, I don't know what it might be like to be out in some other country to prevent you from aspiring and dreaming. Talk, find somebody else who might have lived there and ask them for their opinions and get input from, from others, but don't ever allow it to be an obstacle that you don't go for and really try to achieve because you don't know. There's so, so much, so much upside in being able to work abroad. Lovely, thanks, Stephanie. We have um, a few other questions. I'm just gonna run through a couple because there's one of them that I really wanna ask, but Mr. To someone asks, does Mr. Tony know anyone famous? <laughs> do i know anyone famous the answer is yes all right great they're not going to tell you who i think they're i saw a little ears going up going up um so here's a question i'm going to throw it out to the group are there any jobs at gt for people that don't really like to talk to other people <laughs> who wants to take uh, <laughs> i would say i mean maybe but when you're for example, we're in a professional services business. We're in a people business. So we're not really selling, say, products, right? We're not selling computers or phones or equipment or whatever. We're selling services. So at Grant Thornton, I would say 99% of the time, you're going to have to talk to people. <laughs> um, we're all humans. Um, but here's the thing about Grant Thornton. You're going to like to talk to people. Uh, everyone at Grant Thornton is really, really nice. Everyone at Grant Thornton wants to help each other. We, we even call ourselves our Grant Thornton family. So we're our extended family from our very own family. So if you come with those um, that mind, hopefully you like to talk to your own family. Uh, <laughs> but if, but if uh, at Grant Thornton, think about joining a family. Um, and when you do that, you're going to see very quickly that you're going to want to talk to people. You're going to want to meet even more people. So um, just have that, that mindset. Lovely, lovely. Anything anyone else want to add to that? Yeah, I would say you, you can be true to your DNA in public accounting and at Grant Thornton. And if you're a more introverted person, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, you do have to be willing, to, you know, and be comfortable and enjoy teaching other people, interfacing with somebody at the client, um, you know. Yeah, yeah. Most people that think they don't want to do that, though, eventually realize that once they're confident with the material that they're talking about and once they form relationships, that they're really not as introverted as they thought. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, guys, believe it or not, we are just a few minutes away from our, our end of session today. Didn't it seem like it went by so fast, right? <laughs> well, um, I want to thank you guys so much for all of the information that you shared with students today. And as we get ready to wrap up, I want to give you guys the opportunity to share some words of wisdom with our students. I like to think of this as, you know, what are those things that you wish you knew then that you know now, or what are those, um, those quotes or those things that really kind of stick with you and motivate you and get you, um, and get you in, you know, get you through some of the tough times. Um, what are those things that you really think um, that, that these seeds that you can drop into students that can really help them on their career path? So I will start with Pat to share your, um, your words of wisdom with students. I think the biggest thing I'd like to say to you students is invest in yourself, right? And there's different ways you can invest in yourself via education, right? That could be formal education, like going to college, taking advice, um, just gaining experience. So soak up as much knowledge as possible and never stop learning. Um, you can also invest in yourself in terms of, you know, finding a skill, something that you're good at doing and passionate about. Master it and strive for excellence, right? Goals, set yourself goals and keep challenging yourself. 
And one very important thing, and I, I didn't do this when I was growing up, but is seek mentors and coaches, right? Seek out mentors that are going to keep pushing you to achieve your goals. And most importantly, focus, stay focused on your goals and have fun just running your race, right? Everybody's race is different. Everybody's timeline is different. So run your own race. And I'm going to leave you with a quote here from Chadwick Boseman, which our uh, late Chadwick Boseman, who I'm sure all of you know, uh, but he said, whatever you choose for your career path, just remember the struggles along the way are meant to shape you for your purpose. So just remember that as you, as you guys leave here today. Wonderful. I love that. Thanks, Pat. Thank you so much. Cassie, words of wisdom for our students watching today. Yeah, I think, and I thought um, Pat shared some great advice, and I would say even invest in yourself personally, right? Your hobbies, your interests, your health. Um, but for me, I would say think about the long term right from the beginning. Um, you, you never know where you're going to go and where you're going to wind up, but you know, if you're thinking about where you ultimately want to land, what are the skills that you're going to need and start start kind of um, meshing those into your day to day life early in your career so that you're always growing and developing. And it's it's a long it's a long game, right? Not a short one. I love that. Thank you so much, Cassie. Jessica, words of wisdom for our students. Yes, my words of wisdom would be to believe in yourself and believe in your dreams. And no matter what anybody tells you that you can't do or you can't be or you can't achieve, do not believe them. Like no matter who it is, don't believe them. Believe that you can do whatever you put your mind to. Believe that if you believe in yourself and you're willing to put the work in, that you can achieve it. And I will end with a quote from Harriet Tubman. She says, every great dream begins with a dreamer and always remember you have within you the strength the patience and the passion to reach for the stars and change the world wow i love that thank you so much jessica yeah. tell me words of wisdom for the students today yeah sure thank you um i have several of these i have, I have two daughters and i think they're tired of hearing quotes from dad all the time because i really rely on those to get me through my days um but one, you know several here that i like to use are accentuate the positive and, and eliminate the negative and what that alludes to is that you know a strong positive attitude can be really powerful in your life uh, and then also uh, another quote i love is um really short here it's a moment of pain is worth a lifetime of glory, which I think may allude to what Cassie was saying. It's like, it's a long game, but build a base up front so you're able to prepare uh, for that long uh, career uh, um, gains down the road. Um, and then also my last one would be, uh, and I agree with, with, with um, Jessica on follow your dreams. And I say, you know, follow your dreams, but have a very solid and well thought out backup plan that includes a college degree and pick a major that will allow you to make a living. Uh, I know a lot of folks, uh, even my age that, you know, chose to major in something where they haven't been able to do very well financially. It's kind of hurt them in the long run. Um, but I'm not saying it's all about money, um, but make sure you have a, a degree chosen that can, you know, make sure you can take care of yourself and your family. Mm. Thanks for having me. Great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Stephanie. I would say to ask for what you want, even if you believe it is impossible. There will be so many people surrounding you throughout your journey. Don't be afraid to ask them for help or ask for the opportunity. Ask for the seat at the table. You may not ever have the experience if you don't ask for it. My dad always told me, you cannot have what you didn't ask for. Did you ask for it? So please remember to ask for what it is that you want. Ask for that opportunity. Ask for what you, you, you feel will enlighten you or will help you in your schooling and in your career. And good that. luck. I love that. Thanks, Stephanie. And last but certainly not least, in the middle of my screen, <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, take us out with your words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. And I think uh, I agree with all my colleagues here. It's great, great advice that I think you should take. 
Um, so I'm not going to necessarily repeat everything they've said, but I think this probably goes without saying is work hard at school. Try to go to college, and it, or if you don't go to college, try to go into a trade school. There's a lot of good trades out there that also provide a good living wage, and you can make six figures. So, but whatever you do, just work, work really hard to go after what you want. In the meantime, try to get a job in high school. I think whether that's you know working at a restaurant or lifeguarding in the summer try to get some work experience because I think that will be very valuable to you um, as you go on to your next, you know, post-secondary uh, uh, job or education or whatever you may be doing. But having that experience early on will, will help you. But whatever, whatever you do, please always maintain your honest and integrity. That is very important. So thank you and thank you for having me and having us. Wonderful, wonderful. And I like that, you know, the the crux of who we are professionally really does come down to our integrity and who we are internally and personally. So I would like to thank all of you guys for sharing your time with us today and sharing your journey and your story with our students. I think it's been a wonderful time. You guys have given some phenomenal information and we hope to have you guys back for another career panel. Thank you, Kish. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. Very thank much. you. <laughs> Bye-bye.